thank you for joining me. My name is JJ Billings, and this is my first, my very first, webisode on science, geekery, and awesomeness. At least that's what it will be about as time goes on. And those are three things that they keep kind of recurring in my life, and, and I decided I'm going to talk about them. Um, so why, why am I doing a, a, a video blog? Um, I don't need to do one. But there are really two reasons that I decided to do a video blog, and the first one is pretty simple. This is actually really fun. I do uh, a lot of uh, YouTube videos for work, actually. One of my projects is the Eclipse Integrated Computational Environment, and um, for that project, we uh, actually do YouTube videos. We've been doing them for several years now, and it's really, really fun. The second reason I wanted to do this is because it's also very educational. Believe it or not, it takes a lot of work to do a YouTube video, at least to do it well. You can get your camera phone out, and actually I'm using my camera, uh, my camera phone. You can get your camera phone out and you can just start recording anywhere. But if you kind of want to make it look good and maybe get good audio, uh, it takes a lot of work and it's pretty educational. So, uh, I'm actually going to talk to you about that a little bit. I'm going to tell you about my, my rig. I've got some lighting up and a microphone and everything. And then as, um, as the video goes on, I'm also going to tell you a little bit about my vacation. And this is one of the ships that I saw at the Boston Naval Yard. And this is the Case and Young. And I saw another ship and I also made it back down to DC to the Air and Space Museum Annex, which was, was really cool. So, uh, let's get started. Let's start with the recording rig. So what do I have here? Actually, I have a pretty awesome setup. I am using my smartphone, just my regular Samsung Galaxy Note 2 to record this. It has an 8 megapixel camera. It has a pretty decent microphone. And it takes great video. I I've really been pleased with it so far. So that's, that's uh, what we're recording the video with. And let's call it the first string of audio. So personally, I don't like to take the audio just from the camera phone itself or just whatever camera you're using. At work, we use a, a Canon T3 Rebel I camera and we also use a little lavalier microphone that goes with that and pins right on your shirt. I don't have one of those and even in that case, they're not the best microphones. So what I have just out of the frame of the camera right at the tip of my finger is an Editor Keys um, uh, microphone. And it's a studio microphone. I think it's the SL150. I bought it a couple months ago and tweeted about it. It's pretty awesome. Um, USB microphone. It's a condenser microphone. It's omnidirectional and it picks up everything exceptionally well. So what I do in post-processing with this is that I take the audio from the video I strip it out, I take the audio from the microphone, I lay it on top of it, and I line everything up so that they're together perfectly, and then I put it back into the video, just slide it right back under there. If I did it right, everything lines up and it sounds great. So behind both the microphone and the camera, down on the floor there, I have just a, a computer, actually, that a buddy gave me. Uh, we affectionately call this machine the Blue Devil because it's in a big blue computer case. And it's recording the second string audio that will actually become the main audio. And there's a monitor kind of right beside you there that is scrolling along and giving it. I can see the audio feed as it's being recorded. I can see a little time that tells me that I've already been talking for about four minutes. And so it's pretty handy. I don't know if you can see it, there's a mouse here on the table and a keyboard, so when I'm done, I can say goodbye, smile at you, and then shut everything down. Out of the frame, I actually have a three-point lighting system set up. And this is pretty cool. I've had a lot of, a lot of fun with this. Uh, it was actually the single hardest thing about, uh, about this, this setup. And at 45 degrees on my left, there is a six foot tall uh, lighting boom, and at another 45 degrees on my right is another lighting boom. Above my head is just the regular ceiling light, and it's actually about half the power of the two lights at the sides. 
and that gives me a pretty good a pretty good light on my face. I'm also shooting during the middle of the day. It's uh, yeah, I guess it's uh, July 13th right now, so it's pretty bright outside, and I have some big office windows right there, and um, it looks great. I think the lighting is really well is really well done. And the last but not least thing about this, oh, let me say one more thing about the lighting. Just out of the frame, I have an auxiliary light that's not plugged up, but if I ever need it, I can move it around somewhere, and maybe if I have too much of a shadow under my chin, I can shine the light up on my face. It's a little bright in this room, so I don't have it turned on. The last thing that I want to tell you about my setup um, is kind of what everything is actually sitting on. So all the uh, the camera itself is sitting on a tripod, and it's a standard. I think it says Zikos 72 inch tripod. I've got it at about 32 32 inches right now, and um, all of the software is sitting on top of Fedora 20. So if you need a good operating system with with lots of wonderful open source software that you can do YouTube videos with. I recommend that you that you uh, check out Fedora 20. And when this is all done, when I've got everything recorded and everything uh, to my liking, I'm going to take it off of this computer and I'm going to move it to my server at my desk just out of the shot. And I'm going to I'm going to splice it all up and and redo the audio. I have some videos that I'm going to put in there in a little bit, and and that'll be it. That's a crash course in, in, it looks like, six or seven minutes on, on my equipment and maybe even how to do your own YouTube video. So, next up is my vacation. And I'm going to bring this little brochure back up. This is the, U this is the brochure for the USS Case and Young, which is DD-793. It's in the Boston Harbor. It's a World War II destroyer. I saw the Case and Young a few weeks ago in the harbor. I was actually there to see the other ship in the Boston Harbor, uh, the Charlestown Harbor, and uh, that was the USS Constitution, Old Ironsides. I have had uh, just the, the greatest desire to see that ship since I was a kid, and I finally got to see it. So I went on vacation with my wife, and we went to see our aunt and uncle in, in Boston, we had some time and we went out to see the Constitution and we saw it. It was great. And we also saw the Case and Young that was just it was sitting there in the harbor and we said, well, yeah, let's, let's go hop on board. We went to the museum. There's a, a very nice little museum there with some fun facts that we checked out and it was pretty cool. And then after that, a couple days later, we went down to see some more family in the Washington DC area. And outside of Washington, D.C., at the Air and Space Museum's annex at, at Dulles, uh, the airport, um, we looked at every possible plane you could imagine, and a space shuttle and a few rockets, too. So, uh, I'm not going to actually describe what these things look like or anything. I'm just going to show you some videos. And so, we'll go ahead and, and start with the first video. Here you go, from the Boston Harbor. Okay, so here I am at the Boston Harbor in Boston, Massachusetts, and that's the USS Constitution in front of me. We're looking at the stern of the ship, which is the aftmost part of the ship. And uh, this is old Ironsides, fought a lot of pirates and I think Tripoli and other places. And as soon as it opens up at noon, we're going to hop on there and, and take a look at the old guy. And of course, uh, over here to my right is the USS Case and Young. Uh, destroyer 793 that served in World War II. It was named after Captain Case and Young, uh, who was killed in an attack on Pearl Harbor. All right, so let's uh, let's go on board these guys. All right, so uh, that was that was a pretty cool shot. I enjoyed enjoyed making that one. I've got uh, two more videos, and the second one is looking at the other ship in the harbor. Here we go. So here we are at the USS Case and Young DD-793 destroyer in the Boston Harbor. You can hear the metal screeching back there. We came to see the Constitution and found this little beauty. Look at that gun, that main gun there. And you can see these little side guns for taking out pirates.
this is a pretty neat, uh, pretty neat old ship. So we're gonna go on board and, and take a look and see what's there waiting for us. Okay, so uh, that was the that was the second ship, and uh, this last one is actually from on board of the uh, USS Constitution. I was standing uh, on the aft of the ship. Uh, looking back to where I was, and it, this is just a beautiful video, so enjoy. Here you are. All right, so here I am again, but this time on the aft, actually on deck of the USS Constitution. Um, if if we look out there, straight ahead between those ropes, that's where I was standing when I filmed the last video. This is really an amazing ship, 216 years old, still an active warship for what it's worth. Um, I've seen all three decks that are available to the public so far, and I uh, even kind of snuck a peek at the uh, at the head up on the front of the ship, which is, which is pretty funny. I never knew that's where that term came from. Um, all to, all in all, very well done. Unfortunately, um, for anyone who wants to visit it, it won't be open for the next three years after this summer, while they do some work on it. I'm very very lucky to have come up and seen it right now. It's pretty awesome. Um, you can check out these guns here. Supposedly they weigh 3,700 pounds. They're called the Smashers. No one ever boarded the ship simply because they didn't want to get close enough to these things that it could take out their uh, their ship. So pretty neat all in all. I'm, I'm very excited to have been here. I hope that you get the opportunity to check this out. All right, let's see what else we can get into. Okay, so that... Those are the ships that I saw on my vacation, and there are lots of pictures on these. If you look in the in the links below, uh, you'll see that uh, there's a Flickr. Well, there's a, a shortened link on there, and if you click it, it'll take you to my my Flickr account where you can look at these pictures for both the Case and Young and the Constitution. These videos are on there as well, so if you want to, to check them out, they're there too. Now the the uh, the last part of this little vacation thing is actually all of my pictures from the Smithsonian Institution. I, I can't uh, the Smithsonian Institute. Wow, uh, <laughs> uh, I uh, really can't tell you how awesome the Air and Space Museum Annex is. It is uh, it is an amazing place. If you've ever seen the second Transformers movie, Revenge of the Fallen, uh, part of it is actually filmed in the Air and Space Museum's Annex, and that's the part with Jetfire, where they pick Jetfire up. And Jetfire is the uh, the Blackbird, the SR-71 by Lockheed Martin. That is absolutely my most favorite plane. I love that plane. It's amazing. Um, I was a little disappointed when I went this time, because in the past, the barriers around the side of the plane were a little closer. So if none of the curators were looking, you could sneak your hand in there and touch it. But my wife says that this is most likely why they moved them, because the last time I was there, they saw me touching the SR-71. Anyway, it's a very nice plane. Right behind the SR-71 is the Space Shuttle Discovery. So check it out. Um, uh, the, the, the pictures are in Flickr, and, and the Discovery is pretty awesome, too. But there are so many other amazing planes there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we were sitting there uh, the first time we went years ago, and you know we're looking at this this bomber from World War II, and and I said to my wife, I said, you know this this looks like the Enola Gay, and she laughed at me, said, you've got to be kidding, right? Look above your head, and I looked up, and it actually was the Enola Gay, and it said Enola Gay on the side. So everything is there. So if you ever get a trip. Uh, to, to DC and you have some time, go out to the Annex and check out these amazing planes. Um, anyway, I have talked for a while now, but again, this is all about me doing something that I find fun and enjoyable. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop for now. And, um, if you liked this video, let me know. You can give me some feedback on my Twitter account, which is twitter.com slash JJ Billings or just at JJ Billings if you're already on Twitter. Uh, check out the Flickr photos again. All of these photos are in there. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I really do. I'm going to do these regularly. Please give me your candid feedback. If you like the video, let me know. If you think it sucked, 
let me know, but also tell me why it sucks so I can try to fix it. And thanks again. Have a good one. Uh, enjoy the last few hours of your weekend. See ya.